Hello everybody, welcome back to Musings by Nikki. I am here today with another craft along and we're going to do the next one, uh, the next craft along in the Woodland um, journal that I am working on right now. I'm using my Wild, Wild Wood Wonder kit um, and this is what we're going to make today. We're going to make this uh, belly band. I've got this slipped behind there so you can see kind of the edges of it. I've got um, this long piece here that we're going to make and it's just kind of a collaged piece of scrapbook paper um, with some different strips of paper on it and stuff and then I've done some sewing up and down there. Um, I know it's kind of blurry guys. I have the autofocus turned off because this camera gets kind of jumpy. I have a new camera on order so um, hopefully that'll make it better. But anyway, um, we're going to make this kind of like tree branch bark looking thing and then some of these uh, fun leaves um, that are made out of different mediums. So without the, the journal card back there, that's what it looks like. And we are going to make this thing today. Um, so let me let me leave that out so we can just I'm going to set this aside and we are going to start working. Here's what I've got. I've got a whole stack of a variety of brown um, cardstock. So uh, Joanne, I was just there yesterday with my daughter while my husband and other daughter. So I was there with Liz, my older daughter, my youngest daughter, and my husband went to see um, Avengers for three hours. And Lizzie and I had no desire to be in a movie for three hours, um, especially not Avengers, it's not anything that interests us. So we went to Joanne. We went and had fancy pastries and coffee at a, a wonderful place called Patrick's. And then we went to Joanne and walked around for an inordinate amount of time. But I was under no restraints because, again, remember three hours. So I got, um, they have a sale right now where it's like 10 sheets for two bucks or something. So I got a whole bunch of browns knowing that I'm doing this journal, knowing that I'm about to do this project. Um, and then what I've done is in my scraps, I've just pulled out a variety of papers that kind of have like um, creams and, and light browns and tans and stuff like that. It doesn't even matter. You know, it's nice to have some pattern because it just adds more kind of texture to the finished, finished finished product. This is just the piece of, um, this is just an off cut of some coffee stained paper. And this is what I'm going to actually kind of mount the belly band to. You could do it without mounting it to this paper. Um, and you'll see when we get to that point, but I feel like it's just kind of ca will catch on this ripped edge a lot and stuff. This kind of just makes it a lot more, um, it gives it kind of more, you know, ease of use to, to uh, slide things in and out of there. It's more useful and it won't catch as much on all the leaves and everything. So that's kind of my thought behind it, but you do you. Um, so that's what this is. I'm going to set this aside for now because we don't need that right now. And then the other thing that you need is some various papers to make your leaves out of. This, I always struggle. This is at the back of the Tim Holtz paper pads. They usually come with, they come with like the smaller six by six, I th or no, four by four versions of each page. And then they come with smaller ones yet that are like this size. Right. And then they come with these tiny little like two by two squares. And I always struggle with what to do with these. Ha ha. They work great for making the leaves on the back. So we're going to do that. Um, we're going to use this to make some leaves. Then I pulled out a couple of Tim Holtz vellum pieces. We'll make some leaves out of those. I have some scrappy scrapbook paper that we can make some leaves out of. And um, and then I also have some ribbon that is just, I got this on sale, I think Hobby Lobby. And I think it was like in the Christmas section maybe because um, it's green and uh, it was on super clearance. And so I bought a roll of it and it works perfect for this. So we'll make some leaves out of that too. Because like I said, the more textures, um, the better this is going to look. So first, let's make, we're going to make our branch, or our, we're going to make the part that looks like 
wood or you know that's that's what we're going for this is the part where you need a glue scissor unless we're going to just use it to kind of trim down a piece of paper maybe um to but i do most of it by rip by ripping um so i'm going to choose kind of one of the medium browns here maybe this one right on top um i kind of like this it's the same one there we go and I'm going to, you know, the, I, I, it, does it bother you too that they put stickers on these things? You know, if you're a scrapbooker, usually it's just a layout on one side, but we journal makers use both sides. So, um, here's a great way though, that you don't have to worry about it because that you can have this side be down, right? Because usually when you try to peel these things off, they never just come off nicely. Yeah. See, see, ugh. You don't want that on the back of a page. It leaves a mark, but you won't see it because it's going to be behind. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rip myself a piece of this. There we go. I'm going to put some of this aside for right now. Okay. And then... I'm going to, so this side is ripped, um, and I want to rip down the other side as well, so I'm going to do that. Hello to you, while I'm ripping here, hello to all of my new subscribers, holy cow, um, can we just for a second talk about how Wendy is so amazing save this right don't throw this stuff away because this will make really good um, if you're making a lighter one this will make really good little grain features but uh, Wendy at Wendy journal Wendy's journal adventures um, what I'm gonna do now is just kind of see how this side is nice and straight and this side's a little more wavy I'm gonna try and even it out just a little bit I mean, I, when I say even it out, I mean that in a not even it out kind of way <laughs> because you're tearing. So, I mean, you you know, and what wood is perfect, perfectly straight anyway. I just want to get rid of some of the bigger bulk over here. Anyway, Wendy um, made a video of a thank you thing that I sent her. I sent her a, a, just a thank you gift and she made a journal and you all have been astonishingly kind that have come over from her channel um, so that's gonna just go on the back side so there we go we have our we have our bark our, our branch piece um, yeah I just have been completely overwhelmed and I have a whole bunch of new people to say welcome to now so welcome everybody um hope you find some inspiring stuff here so okay Here's what we've got first, um, all, as always. You know, I had some darker ink in my cart at Joanne too yesterday. I'll have to take a look around. I wonder if it fell out of my, um, you guys don't need to listen to me talk about how I lost the ink. I had some ground espresso uh, in my cart. So I'm gonna just kinda ink the edges of this up a little bit. You can you can see just a little bit. This is kind of a lighter rip to it, and then this is gonna have just a darker edge. This is just um, vintage photo, I believe, that I'm using. My two main go-tos are um, vintage photo and gathered twigs. Although I have wanted ground espresso for some time now, and I had it in my cart yesterday, and I don't know what I did with it. I'm pretty sure I bought it. I'll have to look at my... Let's look at my receipt. Hopefully it just like fell out in the car, huh? Have you guys ever done that? You swear you bought something at the store um, and then it, it probably rolled out of a bag. The worst that it that has ever happened um, was for a while when I was younger, when I was in college, I worked at a group home and we had done grocery shopping and a cantaloupe had rolled out of the bag and under um, one of the seats in the car 
and because we had bought such a huge I mean it was a 12 bed facility so we had a huge grocery order so we just kind of forgot that we had bought it until we didn't go anywhere for a few days and then it was warm in the garage <laughs> and we came back out and it opened the door to the car and it stunk to high heaven and we were like oh what died in there and then we realized oh we bought that cantaloupe that never made it in <laughs> And it was just, oh, you can imagine. I don't have to tell you. It was a mess. And it was not fun to clean up. And the car stunk. The minivan stuck for a long time. All right. So on that pleasant note, we have our basic shape, right? Now we're going to start putting some of these pieces on for interest to kind of make it look like bark. So what I'm going to do is just start ripping off kind of thin little pieces from the edges of my paper. And it's, um, you know, best if they're ripped on both sides. So if they're kind of ripped. And honestly, if it has curves in it, I mean, think about the way wood grain goes kind of. And, um, you know, like I've got some right underneath here. And you get eyes, you know, there's an eye in the wood, um, knots in the wood, and so it kind of curves around those. So you kind of want to just think about using some darker paper and some lighter paper and rip smaller pieces and bigger pieces. So I'm going to rip a few of each kind of, of color from these. This one hasn't been ripped on one side, so... And then we're gonna um, give these a little inking, especially these ones that are kind of white or lighter, um, just because you know, you want some, I, that's just how I like it. You don't have to do that for sir. For sir, I just said. Um, okay. Those. And then let's see, maybe I'll do, well, let's do, let's put these down and then see where we're at. So here's how I do, how I do, how I do. Um, let me get my, okay. Here's this, the, this is some more of that scrapping paper and I'm just using it clearly for ripping. So then I do this on the back. I just put it down and zhuzh, kind of ink. And I'm not doing the edges specifically. I'm just trying to kind of get any of the like real stark white off of the paper because the stark white is what I don't want. Um, so we're just going to get some of that off. Oops, I just ripped that part. Oh, I'm just ripping that one into little pieces. That's okay. More to glue down. This, the gluing part is where your fingers are going to get all kinds of gluey. It's like doing a, a, an art project with, you know, little kiddos, but it's fun or frustrating, depending on who you are. I have some students who would find that very ishy to have their fingers full of glue. Okay, so we've taken some of the... Um, stark white off of the edges of things and then I'm just going to start down at this end and start kind of gluing things on I because a lot of it gets covered up by leaves and stuff I'm really not going to um, get overly concerned with how uh, you know like lay it out before I do start gluing kind of thing I'm not going to worry about that I'm just going to start gluing um, and I'm going to just try to alternate pieces. I just put it upside down on this here. And we're just going to start gluing some stuff down. Uh, 
Um, the other thing that I did, kind of after this part, after this step, oops, um, is I took it to my sewing machine and did some kind of just, you know, sewing back and forth sewing on it. And um, that kind of gave it some extra texture because, again, in my books, I, what I really, one of the things I really like is um, when there's texture, like when you can touch things and feel, you know, extra little bits and stuff. Um, also, <laughs> this is when I was making this the first time. Um, Joy, my 11 year old who likes to craft with me, was up here and I got done with this and I kind of had this vision of what I was going for in my head and I got to the phase where we're about to get to here where I had um, you know ripped some strips down and started kind of collaging them onto this and I was like look at um, mommy made a piece of paper bacon because that's what it's gonna look like in a minute but don't worry, it doesn't look like bacon for long. <laughs> Once you put leaves on it, then you're like, oh yeah, there's no such thing as a bacon tree. Although, wouldn't that just be awesome? Oh my gosh, I for sure have one in my yard. Bacon tree. Then there could be a, a coffee bean tree right next to it. Only it would just grow lattes. And cappuccinos okay I'm happy with that first layer of paper bacon um so this is kind of where we're at for now now we're gonna put another layer of something a little bit more close to um, this base color so I've got I'm gonna go through my stack oh brown paper here again and find something and I think I'm going to go with something a little darker, but still kind of in that same family. Yeah, this one. Oh, hold on. I've got this. This is awesome. It's about the same color, too. Let's do that because it's like a patterned paper. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to rip this edge off because this is the straight edge. Uh, that I don't want and that probably will get binned because I don't um, need a thin little strip of straight edge yeah well no can't do it can't it's got to go in my little scrappy thing because you never know um, I could sew that along the edge of something oh never finished saying what I was saying about Wendy, did I? Wendy did a video and um, I was, yesterday I was out with my daughter and we were at Joanne and my phone started dinging and it, then at some point I realized that Wendy had filmed a video and so many of you had come over and subscribed and said wonderful lovely things and I am again completely humbled and honored and slightly overwhelmed by how um, <laughs> how amazing our little journal community is and how absolutely sweet and kind you all's words are um i just i'm look at i'm usually not at a loss for words but i kind of have been these last few days so i really don't know that there's a way that i could uh, express how i'm truly feeling just know that i really appreciate you guys because honestly I would be sitting here talking to myself otherwise and that's not a good look 
Um, all right, so I've got some of those ripped up. I just painted my nails and now like, I don't know what I just did. Maybe the glue. Oh, girl problems. Okay, I'm gonna just get rid of those um, white edges again here. Did any of you guys go see the Avengers movie? I mean, that is, for me sitting through three hours of anything, that takes a lot of, actually, I just said that and instantly felt convicted that actually I will sit through three hours of YouTube videos without even tr thinking about it. But that's more like I'm crafting at the same time. I'm not usually just sitting and watching for three hours straight. But a three hour movie, man. And they saw it in 3D. Maybe that helps. Like, make it cool. Okay, so I'm just going to layer these, like, over the tops of these. And, again, I'm going to try not to overthink it too much. Let me put these bigger, this bigger ones on first. <clears throat> again, I am not using any sort of fancy glue stick here. I'm just using an Elmer's. It is like an extreme, not the, there are some that say repositionable or something. This is not one of those. It just says Elmer's extreme, which I don't know what's extreme about it, but it seems to do a pretty good job. And this is going to get, you know, another layer with some sewing and then some leaves glued on and those I'll use Faber-Tac for. So, um, this just has to kind of stick it down. Oops. All right. Okay. And this is obviously going to be longer than we need. Um, I am making the full length right now because um, you can use the cutoff chunk for uh, being in collages and stuff for the same book. Um, if you're making this, if you're going to do something like this and you're going to use it in a book, then you know you'll probably use you know, usually like the eight or nine inches of it. And then the other chunk can be stuck in um, a collage or just like at the corner of a pocket or something. I mean, there's all kinds of little places you could use that extra chunk. So if you're going to do a strip, if you're making a strip of paper bacon, you might as well go all in and do the full, you know, 12 to do, do a full 12 inch chunk of it. All right. So there we go. It kind of starting to look papery already, isn't it? Um, at this point, what I did was, um, oh, I did this first. I have some distress spray. And so um, I this one is walnut stain. And I am going to give it a couple of sprays. Um, do I trust myself doing it on just here? Probably not. I'm going to go, you know what, I have like a big giant cardboard piece that I put out and I spray on top of that so I can hold back, you know, a bigger distance. So I'm going to pause for just a second and go do that and then come back because um, I'm not going to haul the giant piece of cardboard out of my desk, but this is right over there. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right. Oh, I'm going to do that. And then while I'm off, geez, while I'm off camera, um, I'm just going to give this a little spritz. You don't have to do this. I mean, you don't have to do any of these, you know, uh, steps. You could g give it extra texture by like taking some sort of sponge and some acrylic paint in a brown color or tan color or something and sponging some of that on or dry brushing. You know, what we're just trying to do is make this kind of look textury like a piece of bark. So anyway, I'm gonna, I am going to um, spritz with some of this and then I'm going to go sew on and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Oh my goodness, that was a much bigger ordeal than I had thought. I like tripped over my cord <laughs> on the end of my tripod, getting up to go to do um, 
spray on my cardboard. Oh my gosh, and I knocked my camera and everything went flying. So I might be at a totally different angle and position right now. Who knows? But that's because I've had to completely redo everything. So anyhow, um, here, let me see if I turn on autofocus just for a second. So you can try and see. Mm. Ooh, there we go. Okay, so can you see kind of how the spray has just put this little speckle over everything? And there is um, sewing. And I'll, I'll literally all I did was put some squiggly lines of sewing, but it just adds a little bit more texture and dimension. Okay, now we're going to turn off autofocus, otherwise it just goes and focuses the whole time. Okay, so we have created the bark piece for the background. Now we need to make the leaves. So here's how we make the leaves. I um, use my two inch punch. I'm pretty sure this is my two inch. Yes, two inch round circle punch. You can do this certainly by hand. Um, you don't have to have a fancy punch uh, if you don't want to. I am just going to cut up the middle of these really quick. Okay, so here's how I do. I don't cut a full circle. I cut kind of, I, with the, this is how you would do it with a circle punch, right? You certainly, if you are cutting leaves with um, a pair of scissors, you can certainly just cut leaves. But I cut like this half moon shape. Then I feed it back in. This of course is going to be super futzy to do on camera because I'm trying to hold it at an angle where you can see. But I, do you see what I'm doing there? Till I just kind of have corners and then I punch again and I end up with the leaf shape and I end up with this little extra tiny piece here. Right? So put it on the, there you go. So now I have a leaf. I have a leaf. <laughs> now we just need to make a whole bunch more. Um, I kind of like using the music pages and this Tim Holtz stuff. I mean, I like using all of them. It just gets you this really cool. Oh, but I am going to do this. This yellow one down here. Let me make a full on punch of this and I will show you. Doesn't, isn't this the coolest? Doesn't it look like a moon? Oh, you can't even really see it enough on paper. Or I mean the paper on, um, let me put it on something because you just got to see it's super cool. It looks like a moon. Anyway, we're going to use this in the journal. So I'm going to keep enough of that. I'm going to keep punching. If you're cutting by hand, you certainly can do that. I mean, you just need to make some leaves. You could make them however you want to. Um, and out of whatever you want to, too. Like you could make them out of um, book pages. That would look cool. Depending on what type of, you know, the crafting you're doing or what type of project you're going to put this into, um, you could make them out of, like I made some leaves like this out of uh, Edith Holden book pages. And that looks really cool. That's a, a way to use up some of the pages of the Edith Holden stuff that have a bunch of writing on them. And, you know, most of us are going for all of the pretty flower pictures and stuff. And um, then you end up with sometimes a bunch of writing pages and you're like, what do I do with that? Well, this is a good way to use that. Um, and like little tiny scraps that you have left over. So we're going to, whoops, put that one in backwards. But it's also a good way to use up these Tim Holtz sheets. And then I don't kind of stop at this. Of course, we're going to ink them because inking. And then um, also we're going to fold them in half 
and kind of give them a little bit of definition because it gives them, again, just a little bit more texture because a tree is cool, a tree branch is cool, but one that has a little bit of lift to it is extra cool. I'm gonna do some out of vellum. Ugh, my punch doesn't like the vellum all that much. Seriously? Okay, we will be doing the vellum leaves by hand apparently, so I don't destroy. So here we go, that's okay. I'll show you how I would do vellum leaves since we're going to fold them in half. Anyway, I go like this and literally just cut leaf shapes. Don't overthink it. They don't need to be perfect on the edges. They don't need to be, you know, um, what, you know, leaves are not all perfect in nature. I can probably get some. I'm going to do, you know what, I was going to try and fold it and get more out of it, but I'm going to make some fatter, wider ones. This is not a tree you find in nature, right? We're not going for realistic. We're going for fanciful. Like Wildwood Wonder Kit is a fanciful take on woodland. So, okay, there we go. We've got a couple of vellum leaves. Then let's make a couple. I don't know. This green might be too light. I don't know if I want them any that light. Um, so let's make a couple out of the ribbon. So to make them out of the ribbon, I did the same thing. I just fold it in half and see if I can kind of give it a crease. And then I'm just going to cut some kind of long, skinny half moon, half circle shapes. can hear our neighbor's kids outside. It is finally um, sunny and nice out for the first time. I'm going to cut another piece here. It's finally sunny and nice out for the first time in a while. It's been kind of cold and rainy here in Minnesota. Today it's lovely, sunny, and 70. So we threw open all the windows and um, it's gorgeous. And what am I doing? Crafting inside. <laughs> All right. So we've got some leaves and we're going to do some inking. So I fold them in half, um, because I want to ink down the center and that just kind of gives the illusion of that, um, center vein in the, in the leaf. And then I just do a quick ink around the edges. This one's already. Plus then when you glue them on, the fold kind of gives them, um, kind of gives them a little extra texture too. So we're going to fold these guys in half. I hope this video isn't getting really long. This is kind of a little bit of a futzy project, but it's fun and it makes this really whimsical, cool, looking thing at the end um, element for your book. Ooh, I am just messing up my nails left and right. I think I just took a chunk out of one with my other fingernail. Okay. Hope the weather's nice where you guys are. We're still in the it's still cold enough here in Minnesota that um, that the mosquitoes haven't come out yet because, oh heavens, when the mosquitoes start coming out, that's when being outside no longer is fun. Right now, um, right now it's nice to be outside. We were talking about maybe having a fire tonight. We enjoy having fires and 
sitting around. So what I'm trying to do is just go corner to corner, tip to tip as I fold. They're not all going to be, I mean, see how this one is not an even, you can't see that. See how that's like not an even fold? But that's because I'm going tip to tip. Leaves are not perfect. They, and these are fanciful leaves. Okay, we're going to quick, whoa, we're going to throw leaves everywhere. Quick zhuzh them. is happening though the all the lily of the valley is starting to pop up in my front garden that is probably one of my favorite flowers that and lilac and we have a ton of lilac here especially in this part of Minnesota in Brooklyn Center um, apparently they like planted lots of them around here way back in the day because it was kind of their claim to fame it was called the Lilac Way. When the highway that were nearest um, used to just be a little county road that came up into the what is now the suburbs, but people used to drive up the highway out of the cities and um, have picnics up here. And they planted a bunch of lilac around to make that more pleasant. So now there just tend to be a bunch of, matter of fact, the street, like two streets down, is called Lilac. And um, the apartment building right by it is called Lilac Apartments. Okay, so we have our tree, our leaves, and our um, paper that we're going to mount it on. I'm going to push some of this away so it's not quite so distracting. Okay. Now, here's what we're going for. Here's the pieces that we have. This is about the length that I'm going to want. Actually, it looks like I'm just a hair over. So you're going to want to trim the base layer down to however tall your pages are, you know, or whatever it is that you're going to put it on. So um, I'm going to give that a good ink as well. So much inking, guys. But inking is really part of what makes this project turn out looking so cool. It gives just, a, it, it lends itself to a bunch of texture. And this is not careful inking, right? This is like kind of grungy, grungy inking here. Okay, now I'm going to glue this down. This is, I'm going to start using my Fabri-Tac for this part now. <clears throat> so we will put some Fabri-Tac. down the middle of our kind of background paper here and then we'll just I'm going to match this up on top and lay it down the middle okay Now I'm going to trim off the extra chunk at the end. And so we have this extra piece of paper bacon bark <laughs> that you can use in collage or, you know, next to um, an envelope or an envelope, uh, you know, on a, the edge of a pocket and put some more leaves on it or, you know, whatever. You can do a lot of things with this. So save that. That's gold. You worked hard for that. But now we have our piece on um, kind of our backing here. And then we're just going to literally, I'm just going to start putting little groupings of leaves 
The only reason um, I do any of this kind of laying it out is to make sure that I'm planning on, um, you know, having kind of the right amount of, uh, or variety of leaves and stuff. So I want to make sure I kind of distribute some of the vellum and the fabric leaves in there. And then I'm, I kind of put, like putting them in clumps of a couple leaves and different ones like so and some can come from the middle of the tree and some can be more towards the outside you know you want to leave a little bit of the um you want to leave a little bit of the bark showing because it's cool and you just worked so hard for it so you know leave some of that bark And once we have these on, then you just literally start gluing them on. That easy. As you can see, this is not a super tough project. It's just kind of, like I said, it's kind of fussy. I don't have any vellum on that side, so we'll put some vellum on that side. But look at that. Isn't it fun and whimsical? And then you don't have to. I mean, of course, I've made this into a tuck spot. You do not have to use this as a tuck spot. You could, whoa, use this wherever you want to use this, however you want to use this. Um, I just think it's cool as a tuck spot, but I can imagine you could use this in a whole bunch of different places and ways. I'm kind of just gluing the bottom half of the um, leaves. Oh, that vellum does not want to note to self. The vellum does not want to stick to the fabric. Here, let me see if I can zoom you in a little and you can see. I'm doing a little better, huh? You're like way aloft there we go so oh yeah I was just gonna lift this whole thing up to show you but that's not smart since much of it is not glued down the vellum doesn't want to stick through through I, it takes me a second to hold it there but paper paper will stick and then some of them I'm gonna put a little bit um, up over the edge like this even because I, you know, this is going to be one of those books for my particular use of this um, application of this project. This book is going to have lots of stuff sticking out of the edges of it. Um, I plan on it being a very heavily kind of textured uh, project with lots of leaves and stuff. Man, the vellum just doesn't want to stick in gen. In general. So let me hold it for a sec. Make sure it sticks down. Okay. See, gluey, inky fingers because I'm touching all the inking and uh, now I'm putting a wet medium on it and it's coming off all over my fingers, but it's worth it because this is cool looking. And I told you to get ready to have gluey fingers. So here we go, gluey fingers. Here's more vellum. I don't know. I don't know if I'm a. I don't know if I'm a huge fan of the vellum in this or not. I didn't use it in the last one, and it doesn't seem to want to stick down. So it looks cool, but I mean, I've already got some glued down, so I'm going to keep going with it. I wonder if it's just this glue which would be 
odd since Fabri-Tac seems to glue almost anything down. Um, here's a glue update. Do you hear it? Can you guys please, please tell me that you can hear the, the, the oof dying of my glue. So I, I'm loving the fact that I don't have glue blobules on here, but let's see if it does it. Oh, not that time. Of course. It's like your kids when you're like, oh, Johnny, sing sing the cute ABC song that you learned. And then your kid that sings the ABC song nonstop suddenly won't sing it at all because they're like, I'm not a performing bear. The glue is feeling the same way right now. But it, so I still don't have glue blobules, but sometimes it'll just go. Ear, ear. I know I don't make the sound nearly as cool as the glue does. But I think it's because of the one little hole that it's like trying to release the air through or whatever. It's kind of funny. It talks back to me. But I will take that over having the little glue boogers and the overflowing glue bottle. Okay, my fingers are thoroughly gluey. I've got one little extra green leaf. I think I will put it down here and I'll probably just make one more little leaf to go over it at some point because I just need it to be in pairs. I don't know. So there we go, guys. Look at this now. Now we have tree branch. You could make this as a bookmark, right? Like you could put this as a bookmark in a journal. Um, I don't know. I might use this as a belly band since I already have one there. I might use it on in some other way. Who knows? Who knows? But there we go, guys. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and all of my yabbering. And um, thank you for ten spending your time with me today. And um, I will be back again soon. I am dreaming up more ways to do some um, cool stuff in this book. And uh, I will take you along with me. So thanks again, guys. Um, I will see you again very soon. Hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever it is you are on the globe. Um, and uh, I hope that you have a lovely, lovely day. God bless. See you again soon. Bye-bye.